All right, moving so on. Moving on, yes, yes. You, uh, you like wrestling, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm partial to it. You're partial to it. Yeah, you, yeah. I think you went to some events. Yes, recently? I did. I went to. Am I getting this right? You went to a Pog, P A W G <laughs> wrestling event. Is that right? Uh, no, that's wrong. It's a P W G, which is a Pro Wrestling Guerrilla. And they. Are you sure it's not P A W G? I'm pretty sure it's not P A W G. And you were there, right? You I was there. This. So all my freaking research into fat ass white girls is out the door. Thank you. I mean, you, you know, your research is not not for nothing, but uh, it was the wrong. It was the wrong. It was PWG. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. I'd like to go to the P. I'd love to go to the Pog wrestling. That'd be cool. They the should fat ass white girls. I'm. Eh, okay. it, I'm sure it's somewhere. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, PWG uh, okay. Pro Wrestling Gorilla. These guys have been around for ten years. They've been they've been at the same uh, hall, which is in Reseda, and I did not know about this because I was born and raised in the valley, and valley I've known they've dude. been. Yeah, bro. <laughs> bro, I like wrestling. <laughs> really, wrestling's cool. Oh man, two oh. dudes in like speedos wrestling each other. Hey, they're not all speedos. Okay, <laughs> but um, we went and they apparently had a, a quote unquote snafu with uh, PayPal, so they had more tickets available, and they moved the venue to the Globe which was way better. I'd never been to the hall. It took me three years, three years to finally get tickets to the show because of a, an error. These things sell out so freaking fast. It, it, it's uh, it, like, I don't even believe they actually do sell them. They literally sell out so fast. And mm. I've never been to the hall. I've always tried to go. And like, I've heard, <laughs> I've heard that they kick it at your corner of Satakoy <laughs> and wherever, where the Denny's is like Satakoy and Reseda. But like all the wrestlers go there, uh-huh. um, but they have big name indie guys, man, like uh-huh. big big. And sometimes um, former they had uh, uh, Cody and Kurt Angle, who were W, who were you know who were WWE stars that were working the indie scenes. Kurt Angle has since come back, but they've had you know the Bullet Club, the Young Bucks, pretty much start there. The uh, uh, um, Keith Lee is blowing up from there. And, just all these fucking amazing athletes uh-huh. that, and yes, athletes that just put on just <laughs> crazy shows and they tell the story in the ring. And I have another podcast with Renata that we talk more in depth with a lot of the matches and, and what we went through. But what's it called? It's called the Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> and I'll uh, check that out now. You're here. <laughs> yep, yep. Mama's going to be real proud when you check the Wrestling Podcast. It's going to be real good. I um, appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it, and they finally did it at the Globe, which was great. Um, and we met some, we met a lot of people there. I met Josh Barnett. I met Dave oh, Meltzer, nice. who's an ama- who's been in the industry as a, as one of the, you know, quote unquote dirt sheet, you know, writer, wrestling writers. He's got a podcast too. Um, been in the industry for years. He's always there. I mean, uh, the guitarist from tool was there and the bar, it was better because it was at the globe theater. So you had two bars, you had an upstairs, you had more room and it was, it was awesome. It was, I mean, uh, the fact that Renata, barely kind of got back into wrestling you know i showed her wrestle kingdom and i showed her some wwe and stuff uh-huh. and like she really got into it and it was like like we both came out as if we went to an underground rock show or underground hip-hop show like it was just that feel of just nice. everybody in there was cool as fuck uh-huh. even if even the smarks um the what the smarks what so that's a smarks? wrestling term for smart marks those are those are basically like to me, those are the true hipsters of wrestling who are like smart marks. Okay. Yeah, who are just like, oh, you know, I was in, in, I was watching it at the hall in Santa Clarita when the Young Bucks started in two thousand five, and you know, <laughs> I all have like I a Californian accent. Like no, that's Mark. more of, that's more of like a I'm oh, I'm oh, 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 Yeah, okay. and like, and it's like, dude, like, <laughs> you know. Anyways, I don't want to go on okay. a tangent on that, but like, you, you know, those guys were there who mm-hmm. who like you know booed the new for first timers who were there and it's like motherfucker you were a first timer too like uh, I tried for three years trying to get in this fucking thing and I finally get the opportunity uh-huh. but overall everybody was cool as fuck we met a lot of cool people mm-hmm. I drank two I, I spilled two drinks uh, I dropped two of my drinks which was uh-huh. awesome people going up to the ring the, to the ring like walking up to the ring because there's no barriers uh-huh. walking up to the ring and just pounding on the mat oh, really? yeah it was oh, yeah. just the, the vibe the energy non-stop action from from beginner to beginning to end from uh-huh. pillar to post from bell to bell uh-huh. and from match to match it was all entertaining and i found out that renata has a crush on a wrestler <laughs> oh hey now which one uh will osprey will because because i i was like oh yeah will osprey's here and she like stopped and did like this little kind of like, wait 
uh-huh. Will Osprey is here. And I didn't even know. And I was like, oh, you okay. Hey, hey, hey. So, yeah, she her boyfriend, Will. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I got a picture with a bunch of the wrestlers, um, which was cool as shit. They put out their, their, you know, Keith Lee, who was there right when he was signing stuff and taking pictures. He, he had his match coming up for the world title, which uh-huh. he won. Um, congratulations. And um, at the end of the match, he got out of the ring and s- stood with us, took a picture with him in the belt. Oh, I saw um, that. Okay. Uh, Brody King, who's a cool, who we fell in love with. That guy is awesome. He's just this big, tatted up dude mm-hmm. from Van Nuys, right down the street where she was. I was like, "Where are you? Where in Van Nuys, dude?" And he's like, "Right by the In and Out over there on Van Nuys." <laughs> I was like, "I know that. I know that In and Out." I was like, "Dude, wow. I was like, next time, bro, I'll get you a double double." <laughs> and he was cool as hell. But yeah, uh-huh. PWG was it was it was it was so much fucking fun. Like I, I got I was winded by the end of the night. It, it right. was it was great, and that was on Friday. Uh huh. So come Sunday, okay, was New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong Style Evolved? Strong Style Evolved, damn. At the uh, Long Beach uh, Pyramid, uh-huh. Walter Pyramid, and that place was awesome because it's mainly like you know sporting events for colleges, and it, it was a small little basketball you know kind of uh, stadium, and, you know. And I was worried about my view, and the view was perfect. Those tickets sold out in thirty minutes. Okay. New Japan, when they come here, man, they sell out. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they sell out anywhere. But like, you know, you know, when we take for granted for musicians we see here because we're LA, we see a lot of musicians all the time. You can see them twice yeah. in a year, sometimes, whatever, maybe even three times. Yeah. Um, I mean, shit, I saw a band five times in one year. But when these Coldplay? guys, uh, no, dude, shut up, man. <laughs> no one's supposed to know that. Oh, okay. um, <clears throat> uh, Metallica, yeah, it was Metallica. Rah, rah. <laughs> um, but anyways, like. You know, they're you know the way we see like WWE here, we see them so many times. New Japan comes out; it's like rock stars. These guys had an ovation that even I think they were surprised. Yeah. So many of the so many people were worried that certain uh, characters weren't going to get over, and they got over like big. And the crowd was in such unison. And and I mean, by the end of the night, I lost my voice. Mm-hmm. I was exhausted, and it was just ma- every single match in my opinion, was just so damn good. And I do want to say props to Jay White and and um, and uh, Adam Page because that match, a lot of people were saying, was kind of like, meh, from, at least from the television viewers. But mm-hmm. in, the, in the crowd, everybody was appreciating. We were just tired and saving our energy for the main event. I see. But it was so much fucking fun. The line for beer sucked because there was only two stations, two taps, and you had to go somewhere to get a wristband first. So you waited in line for a wristband only to wait in line for a beer that wrapped around the entire event. It, it was just a circle around. Yeah, yeah, it took they need me to fix that. Well, I'm like, if you're going to have, I'm like, why don't you give the wristbands at the door oh, first? There you go, yeah. Because that makes no sense. And the two people that were doing the wristbands, one was an old, old African American gentleman who just was really, really slow. Okay. I'm sorry to say that, but it sucked and it was slow. We wanted beer, but I guess it was a good idea because we were drinking pretty much that whole weekend from the from PWG mm-hmm. and the birthday party the night before. And the next day, we were just like, "I think this is a good idea." Maybe we didn't get alcohol, but it was it was a lot of fun. And it's hard for me to watch the you know WWE now because it, of the intensity. It's and the just level. the stories are told in the in the ring. Uh-huh. They don't do 50 cuts, they don't do 20 replays. Uh-huh. It's just it's it's straightforward storytelling in the ring mm-hmm. with uh, storytelling that they, you know, bring into from the outside, but it's again, it's they tell their story in the ring and it's it's so goddamn entertaining. All right. So it was yeah, that that was my weekend of wrestling and it was it was great. Speaking of WWE wasn't there like some like big event that came up recently? Oh, some little you know event they had yeah, was last it, was weekend. It called Ronda I think it was called Mania. I think I think it was called R- R- Ronda Arouse Me Radio. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> I just had to make that joke. Sorry. Okay. Um, yep, WrestleMania. WrestleMania 34 had happened, come and gone, and what's the takeaway with that? It was well. First of all, it was seven hours long. Okay. Um, Damn. Which seven hours? Seven hours. Which I mean. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, like, New Japan's Wrestle Kingdom and their events, they're about three to four, maybe maybe five hours. But, yeah, it was seven hours, including the two-hour pre-kickoff. Mm-hmm. And the main event was five hours. So it was a lot of heavy drinking. <laughs> um, we were playing uh, a game from the uh, guys that I follow called the Cultaholics, which you guys should check out. They're fucking awesome. They're funny as hell. And uh, the drinking game was one sip for every elimination in, a, in the Battle Royal. So that's about... 60 sips, I guess, for everybody that got eliminated. 
Um, it was two sips for every yes chant, for every finisher move, and for every suplex. And I pretty much, and, and me and everybody else pretty much kind of tapped out after a certain point because we're like, okay, this is, I couldn't even see straight at some point. I think it was halfway through WrestleMania I stopped drinking. Okay. Um, you still and, have your liver, right? It was just eating and just smoking. That was My liver gave up on me a long time ago. <laughs> but yeah, um, the takeaway was it was interesting. Interesting? Uh, yeah, it was, it was, cause I didn't know what to, I didn't know what to think even after the fact. And the next day when I started talking to it with my buddy Coulter, that's when I really started to realize how I mm-hmm. felt about it. And I think Chris Coulter. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Coulter. Um, and I think it was about an average show for me. It was really, it was good. It was better than the last two or three. I want to say, okay. um, it was definitely good couple eh, why why'd they do that and a few like that was awesome i'm glad they did that and ronda rousey i salute you ma'am i mm-hmm. take my hat off i take back uh, any any cynicism or worry i had because she put on probably one of the best performances of the night she very... looked like she looked like she belonged in there. Like I honestly didn't. I I forgot it was Ronda Rousey and and was watching a wrestling match. And she she f- did phenomenally. I've been very skeptical with uh, Rondy's uh, Rondy R- Rondy 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 R- 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 Rondy, R- no, R- Rondy Rowdy <laughs> Ronda. I've been skeptical with Ronda Rousey's uh, move to wrestling, and I've been a big fan of hers ever since uh, Showtime. Uh, all those fights on Showtime. Strike Force. Uh, Strike Force, yeah. And I was hoping that she'd try and come back and maybe go for the belt again in UFC. Well, she hasn't left. She's she's not left MMA altogether. Okay. But she is a full time uh, WWE star. But yeah. again, Brock was kind of part time and yeah. did it. But a lot of ath- a lot of MMA guys are making the switch. Mm-hmm. You know, at the PWG show, Matt Riddle, who was a uh, who's a great MMA fighter. Um, is one of the best indie wrestlers I've ever seen. And he had a match with Zack Sabre Jr. And, mm. and it was like, again, I forget he was an MMA fighter. I was like, this guy's an amazing athlete. And he put on a hell of a show. But yeah, like, I, I think the thing with Ronda was Matt Riddle, you look at him, Tom Lawler, you look at them, you look at him, and they started in the indies. Uh-huh. You know, they went the indie wrestling route and then started, you know, they, they made their, I don't know where Lawler, Tom Lawler is, but made their, where, their way up. Yeah. Um, Ronda Rousey just went straight to the WWE. He went, she went straight to basically the NBA. She went from, yeah. you know, college, ba- she went from not even like high school basketball to uh-huh. NBA starter, you know, like, um, not to say that's a mistake. I mean, look at Kobe, but, um, like, that's the thing, you know, a, a lot of the wrestling, you know, <laughs> nobody hates wrestling more than wrestling fans, if that makes sense. Yeah. And because Lee was passionate about it <laughs> pretty much, um, she, she, except for the Smarks. Again, I hate you. I, I, <laughs> you guys are the hipsters, not us. But anyways, um, she went straight to that, and her mic skills was like, eh, you know, no, she didn't really do much promo work, and we mm-hmm. didn't see her do much wrestling stuff. But when she got in there and did it, it, it was again night and yeah, day. Yeah, that's what made me skeptical because seeing the early promos, I was like, ah, yeah, that's what made everybody. She's got a, you know, and that's what made everybody more, else skeptical. Yeah, a little more work to do. But then I saw clips from the actual fight with uh, her and uh, Stephanie McMahon. Yeah. She did that off the ropes to a shoulder charge and then right into a freaking judo roll, then right bounced back off the ropes again in like a split second. I was like, holy fuck, that looked amazing. Yeah. And then she she's in that, what, what's Triple H's uh, signature move? Oh, the pedigree. The pedigree. So uh, Triple H has Ronda in the pedigree. And then as he lifts her up, she does a reversal on him into a uh, armbar, and she's like, "What you got now? What you got now, huh?" And <laughs> yeah, she was. She, uh, she looked amazing, yeah. and then from from what everybody has seen and said, she looked like an absolute star. Yeah, and all my skepticism oh, yeah. just went away. Like, okay, fuck, yeah. I I see it now. You made a great decision into going to the WWE, and and then, she, she she brought it. And she, I mean, she said next to her wedding day, this is probably the best day of her life. <laughs> and like, she's, I think she even made mention of her two losses, like mm-hmm. kind of um, like, I, like it humbled her. And I think she, she was actually kind of um, glad that like, it it, happened, it, yeah. it, it's something about it that made her uh, pleased because when she went to WWE, like it kind of like, I don't want, I don't want to say like erased it for her, but I think she mm-hmm. accepted it more. Yeah, I think you know, yeah. and I think she's actually finally gotten over 
because she's you know she's been around nothing but yes men who tell her I mean when she mm-hmm. that Holly Holmes fight they kept telling her oh you're doing great it's like dude she's yeah. getting worked yeah um, but I think she's actually been able to accept it now and, and move on and, and find her and, she, and this is what she's always wanted to do her whole life she's always been passionate of, of mm-hmm. you know wrestling and um, and I'm 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 very pleased with what, how it came yeah. out. She did great. She was she is a WWE superstar. Full, you know. It's it's yeah. still kind of surreal to see it, but mm-hmm. you know, I, I like welcome to the fold. Yep. Welcome to the family. You know, Looking I forward I, some more. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm really really excited now. Again with wrestling, you know, the whole Stephanie McMahon blocking the armbar from an MMA <laughs> judo champion. Course, you know, you're like, oh, come on. But like again, we were accepting it. Like we were yeah. in the story, and we were like, you know, mm-hmm. we we were like, yeah, you know, cheering her on. So so it worked. It worked. They did they. My hat's off, man, to everybody. She was in there with vets. And yes, I'm calling Stephanie McMahon a veteran wrestler, even though she fucking doesn't. But <laughs> they, you know, she was in there with Kurt Angle and Triple H. And everybody thought it was going to be Kurt Angle and Triple H for like 90% of the time. Yeah. And no, nah, it was no. split. And this is the first time in years that it was more intergender, where like men got involved with the women. I see. Because for the longest time, you know, it, they, did that, they did that in the Attitude Era and then they stopped because of the PG Era. Mm-hmm. And they have their stock, you know, their, their their stockholders and everyone, and so no man could hit a woman. But this one, uh, it was okay. fairly, you know, like, you know, Kurt Angle giving Stephanie the ankle lock, and and Ron, uh, you know, uh, most guys get beat up by women anyways. But like Ronda and Triple H, like standing toe to toe, like it was great. It was it was mm-hmm. it it was it it, it, need, it needed it needed all of that, and it was what it was. And uh-huh. I yeah, WrestleMania was again on average it was I I, I give it like a maybe six and a half seven out of ten. Okay. I say you know, what? ballpark seven to out of ten. It, it was entertaining for the most part. Yeah, ballpark seven yeah. out of ten, dude. Yeah, I don't right. know if that made sense, but yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not you, me. <laughs> okay. I think. What? Who am I? What is happening? But yeah, that's that was yeah. That's that my, was your wrestling. That's my wrestling take. All right. You smarks. <laughs>